human research materials. They just killed people for no apparent reason except to determine how they would react when being killed. World justice will continue. In order to keep Japan's need for chemical and biological weapons secret from the world, their laboratory, Unit 731, was deliberately located in a remote part of their newly conquered empire. Shiro Ishii, the mastermind behind the operation, knew he needed complete impunity, isolation, and a constant supply of test subjects in order to successfully carry out his research. He chose to build in Ping Fan, a suburb of Harbin. With a population of 240,000 Chinese and 81,000 Russians and other non-Chinese, Harbin was remote yet accessible and its prisons were well stocked with laboratory fodder. Construction of Unit 731 began almost immediately and Shiro Ishii oversaw every detail. Nothing was left to chance. An unlimited supply of funds was provided by the Japanese government for state-of-the-art equipment and anything and everything Ishii required for himself and his staff. There was a huge building that was called the administrative building. It was so big and so well constructed that at the end of the war, when all of uh, Ping Fan was destroyed, they couldn't blow up the building. Tucked away in the interior of the administration building was a prison where up to 500 men, women, and children could be housed. This was the most secret part of this already top secret facility. Unit 731 was staffed with the cream of the crop of Japanese scientists and research physicians. The scientists turned the compound into a nightmare laboratory using humans as test animals. Not only could all types of debilitating biological weapons be developed to use against Japan's enemies, advanced research was done into how to treat Japanese soldiers who may fall victim to such weapons as well as conventional arms attacks. The process of dehumanization began with a twist of the language based on the lie told to mislead the local population into a false sense of security. This cover story stated that Unit 731 was a harmless lumber mill. These scientists had a weird sense of humor. They referred to their victims as marutas, which is uh, loosely translated as logs. And that's how they thought of them, as pieces of wood, not as humans. You can carve them up, you can burn them in a fireplace, who cares? There was no shortage of this living wood for the construction of Shiro Ishii's fiendish dreams. If they ran short of candidates, the secret police would just literally sweep the streets of the city and pick up enough candidates uh, for the, the lab. They would be placed on a one-way train ride to Unit 731. The train with eight boxcars stopped. Soldiers opened the doors and removed what looked like straw mats wrapped in steel wires. I didn't know what was happening. And then I noticed arms sticking out and heads moving and blood coming out. And then the Japanese soldiers yelled logs, so I knew those were people. The fate of these prisoners was ordained the moment they entered the compound. Not one survived. We were testing the effectiveness of germs to determine how many people would be killed without giving a vaccine. In other prisoners, we injected vaccines and waited a while for antibodies to react. As we expected, those who did not get the vaccine got sick and died first. 
So we dissected them. The best way, in the minds of the scientists, to observe the human body's defense system battling the invading pathogen was by performing live vivisections, rarely giving anesthesia. I was ordered to wash that person's body with a deck brush before he or she was taken into the dissection room naked by a member of a special team. The first time, I trembled. One team member was listening to the heartbeat using a stethoscope. One was standing holding a knife. The moment a stethoscope was removed from his ear, a knife went into the body. I did not know, but according to doctors, this timing was very important, because if the timing was wrong, we could get blood all over us, and then we could get infected. Not only were the prisoners deliberately infected with deadly diseases and dissected alive, they were also used for many more dramatic tests. Fifty different lethal experiments, many thought of spontaneously and capriciously by Ishii and his staff. This place was Unit 731's frostbite experiment lab built in 1943. All year round, frostbite lab tests were conducted inside. What we still have today here is the base of their freezing machine, observation windows, etc. They had refrigerated chambers, and also in uh, Manchuria, the winters are very severe, 40, 50 degrees below zero Fahrenheit, and they would expose prisoners to various parts of their bodies to these temperatures, uh, freeze them, and then try various techniques to literally dehydrate them. Uh, to see what was the most effective way of dealing with frostbite so that that could be used in uh, warfare as well, both to protect Japanese troops as well as to affect uh, the enemy. Some experiments were markedly more violent than others. To determine the best course of treatment of varying degrees of shrapnel wounds sustained in the field by Japanese soldiers, Chinese prisoners were exposed to direct bomb blasts. They were strapped, unprotected, to wooden planks staked into the ground at increasing distances around a bomb, which was then detonated. Afterward, it was surgery for most, autopsies for the rest. People who were experimented on generally lasted four to six weeks, and then they were sacrificed. What is so heinous about this is that Anyone was prey to these experiments. We're talking about men, women, children. Bodies were disposed of in a crematorium, much like the ones that were working overtime 3,000 miles away in Nazi-occupied Europe. There were always two or 3,000 logs prepared. There were two burning places and they were always burning dead bodies. I imagine they died because of the research. Like their counterparts in the Nazi death camps, the dedicated Japanese who toiled away at Unit 731 believed that they too were only following orders. Orders that came from the ultimate authority. They were serving the emperor, they were serving their country. That's all they were interested in. The fact that people uh, were being killed in these experiments meant nothing to them. And Shiro Ishii had plans that spread far beyond the walls of his compound. He planned to create weapons that could reach as far as the United States, and he began to use the surrounding countryside as a laboratory. They not only worked on humans in laboratories, but when they developed what they believed were prototypes for weapons of the future, they field tested them on cities and villages throughout China. Hundreds of thousands of people were affected by these field tests. Many tens of thousands were killed in these field tests. Many other uncountable numbers became ill. <laughs> 